Hello, this is Pierre San Giorgio, author of Survive, The Economic Collapse. Today I would like to review a book which I found extremely interesting and a must-read for all of you. This book is Islam at War by historian George Nafziger with, and Mark Walton. Now, George Nafziger is a well-known historian that I knew from the days of my, uh, let's say, hobby in software programming war games. He's a historian that is a specialist in Napoleonic War and also World War II. And in 2003, I guess in the wake of uh, September 11 and the U.S. invasion of Afghanistan and Iraq, uh, he wrote this, uh, I think, extremely uh, useful book, which uh, is not uh, very thick, easy to read, and um, which gives a very broad and complete perspective of what is the history of uh, Islam at war. And um, first of all, let me say that this book is, um, is factual. It is not opinionated whether pro or against Islam, which is uh, refreshing because I really do not like to read history books that uh, give opinions or sometimes are insulting against um, a religion, a creed, or uh, I think we have to be mature enough to read the facts and of course, make uh, think for ourselves and make ourselves the opinion, uh, our opinions and our conclusions based on the history and the facts that uh, are described. In this book, these facts are extremely well researched, uh, extremely complete, and they cover a very wide, uh, of course, history and the very long history of um, uh, the religion of Islam that starts from um, the Muhammad, which is the prophet, of course. Uh, of Muslims, which is technically, linguistically, it's not technically a prophet, it's a messenger of, of God, or so they believe. And therefore, it shows how um, uh, Muhammad forged um, warfare techniques uh, based from the habits and the ideas of the, the Bedouin tribes of the, of the Arabian desert, and how these techniques um, managed to make him, uh, of course, successful, take control of uh, Medina and Mecca. Uh, it's also very interesting to see how it ha he had influences from Christian monks, but also from Jewish tribes. Uh, monks, uh, and, and also that gives a lot of, I didn't know how, how, how influential Christianity was to the early uh, life of Muhammad and how uh, Judaism uh, was influencing the second part, which is much more violent and much more warfaring, and also how much he felt betrayed when the Jewish tribe of Medina uh, betrayed him. And that explained also some form of aggressiveness towards Jewish uh, since the dawn of, of Islam. Very interesting facts that, uh, that I discovered. But the most important part of the book was to understand how the uh, Arab Muslim conquered uh, Mesopotamia and then uh, defeated uh, the Persian army the, uh, as well as the Byzantine army, which were the two most powerful empires uh, of that time in that region. And it was very interesting how a very small amount of Arab uh, uh, cavalry uh, succeeded uh, with incredible uh, feats of courage and, and interesting tactics to defeat uh, such powerful uh, empires, really, and conquer the, the Middle East. And there is also a very interesting uh, story on how the Arab conquest conquered Egypt and North Africa, there is a full chapter on the wars in Spain, and it was interesting to see that um, actually we, we are told that Arabs uh, stayed in Spain for 800 years. Well, this is the theory, but in reality it was a constant war. It was guerrilla war, it was um, factions, and, it, and, and indeed what, what we realize is that it was never a hegemonic bloc, and also there was the Omeyyads, the Almoravids, there was some dynasties of Arab conquerors, they never really controlled, and there was never full he uh, religious he hegemony on the, the lands they conquered. On the contrary, they were actually they were very strong where they were united, and they included a lot of mercenaries from Jewish, Christians, and of course warlords from, from, from other creeds. And when they were weakened, they also had a lot of division. And in fact, you, you discover in this book that throughout the 14 centuries of Islam, the vast majority of Islamic wars were within Islam between different warlords for power and conquest. 
So this was very interesting. Of course, there's a great deal of the book that covers the Ottoman Empire, how it started, how it created, how it defeated Byzantium, how it uh, developed. And you can imagine uh, people from the steppes who developed a very powerful navy, the most, most powerful navy in the Mediterranean, and how it conquered the Balkans and went to the almost actually to the gates of Vienna and uh, sieging Vienna as well as Malta. And, and, and started to have suddenly defeats from the 17th century and became what was called in the 19th century the sick man of Europe and eventually was dismembered and dismantled and um, through that process gave birth of very modern and very, uh, and very dynamic Turkey. Very interesting approach and examples of how warfare shaped um, the, the DNA of the Ottoman Empire but also how it shaped the Mamluks. And this book covers the Janissaries and how these corps of elite soldiers, I mean, the Ottomans were the most advanced uh, arm, army and empire of that time. It went from, of course, the Balkans to uh, Yemen, from uh, Alge Algiers to uh, Persia, to from, uh, from um, uh, a huge empire that, that was covered by, by these uh, this, 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 this people who carried some very interesting forms of warfare, artillery, naval warfare, uh, elite infantry, uh, cavalry, very mobile uh, ways of, of approaching, psychological warfare as well with music, very interesting parts of that. So this, this was very interesting. It also covered the abysmal um, performance of the Arab armies against Israel as well. And this shows why and how, in, uh, what are the conditions for um, Islamic warfare to be successful and what are the con conditions for it to not be successful. I think it's a very enlightening book and of course it covers the initial stages of what was called, remember in 2003, the global war on terror, which is a disaster and actually is backfiring. I would love to have a new chapter of this book on what happened since 2003, which has been, uh, I believe, a defeat of the West in the lands of Islam, something that was... Uh, uh, that didn't happen since the 19th century, and um, since the early 19th century, and and therefore it is uh, it is very interesting to book to understand. So this book should be read. I think first of all should be read by everyone who is Muslim to understand the history of their warfare and and how and why they were successful at some point, and why and how they were unsuccessful at some point. Should also be read by anyone who's not. Uh, um, Muslim as well to understand, you know, this is a this is a religion that is on the forefront uh, for the last twenty years. Uh, it's the forefront of the news, and we discovered that it, it has been on the forefront of the news for fourteen centuries. I mean, uh, Islam and Europe have been at war. Of course, there's a big chapter on the Crusades. There's a big chapter on on um, on uh, uh, jihad and the religious texts that that push for that. And once again, I found it very interesting because it's not judgmental. It doesn't say this is bad or this is good. It doesn't say, oh, this is evil. It does, you know, uh, show. And actually, it is very honest, I found, in showing that the long tradition of slavery and putting into slavery conquers, conquered people and also of massive slaughtering of conquering, conquered people that Islam did, it's not peculiar to Islam. It is something that was very common uh, throughout the Middle Ages, throughout uh, the Renaissance, and uh, and um, and today seems, of course, a bit different when we look at what happened in Syria or Libya, when you see all these massacres and civilians beheaded, and 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 it's shocking for us because we're not used to that anymore. But it has been the norm, both for Europeans, for Asians, and also for Muslims, because that was the way warfare was done. The the, the psychological effect of the shock and awe of having a population uh, beheaded and, and put into slavery uh, was something very, in fact, very useful for the other population near to be either quiet, subservient, or to surrender without war. And again, winning without war is one of the most uh, useful tricks that, of course, um, the Islam uh, uh, warfare was very good at, very, very, very cunning and very powerful at that. So I found this book, which is not very long to read, it's about 260 pages, uh, I found it very interesting. It is published um, Prager Press, uh, easy to find on Amazon. I uh, really encourage you to read this book. I think it's a must read in today's world to understand the, pers the historical perspective 
of the, the wars between Islam and the rest of the world, because it also has a chapter on India and the Islamic conquest of um, the Indian subcontinent, the Mughals' empires, and, and, and all that. So a very interesting book. Of course, it covers this in, a, in a, I think, in enough detail so that even someone who is not a history buff like I am or a, a crazy guy like me about uh, uh, warfare history, uh, I think it's good enough for most people. So anyone can understand uh, the stories. And I think it's... Um, it's really very interesting, and once again, because it is neutral, it is uh, uh, factual, it doesn't give opinions or religious uh, um, bias. I think it's a very, very good book. So, Islam at War, a History by um, George F. Nafziger. Uh, he's a great guy, by the way. He used to have a, 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 a great website where you could find a lot of information, order of battles that were quite unique from uh, Napoleonic battles uh, to... Uh, uh, even modern warfare. So I encourage you to read this book. I think it's very important in today's world to understand the perspective uh, of the history um, of Islam's uh, warfare interactions with the rest of the world. Thanks a lot. Ciao.